Today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with your wedding travel, or as it is also called, honeymoon. An event is definitely important in the life of a young family. It can be bright impressions received from an unforgettable adventure, or for example, a long-awaited vacation from a boring life somewhere on the Azure coast under the shade of palm trees. But what about when you go on your wedding trip only to commit a real crime or not to commit it, but only to be accused of it? Would the honeymoon be as bright and carefree in such a case? I don't think so. Unforgettable, of course. Isabella Rodriguez, hereafter Hellman, was born in 1975 in Colombia. It is a country where everyone speaks only Spanish, but Isabella literally dreamed the American dream. She bought books in English, listened to songs on the radio, and all just to learn the language and as soon as possible to leave to conquer the northern part of the continent. However, the language, Isabella succeeded, but the southern accent remained with her forever. But this did not prevent the young woman from moving to Florida, get a job there as a real estate agent, and help in renting or buying homes, like her people who speak only Spanish. In 2002, Isabella, although not to say that she was lucky, but still married William Hellman. And despite the fact that the couple lived in marriage for 10 years, their entire union, a series of continuous quarrels and domestic disputes. Finally, when the patience of the spouses finally burst, they filed for divorce. The divorce process lasted a very long time, as long as two years. During these two years, Isabella even managed to find a new man with whom, as it seemed to her, she will certainly find happiness. The new lover's name was Lewis Bennett, and he was from Great Britain. As a child, his family moved to live in Australia, thanks to which Lewis received dual citizenship and was able to return to his native country and graduate from their quite prestigious Camborne School of Mines. But Lewis never managed to work in his specialty. It is impossible to say whether this is good or bad, because just a couple of years after graduating in the UK, he returned to Australia and opened his own solar panel manufacturing company. And it is worth noting that it was quite successful because just four years later, he was able to enter the American market. And in view of the fact that his main office was in Florida, the young and promising Lewis began to look for a wife there via the internet. It would seem that today, it is easy to get acquainted with someone on the internet and much easier than to do it in person. But Lewis had no luck with this for a long time. He flipped through the profiles of women, not even paying much attention to them. Those who wrote to him first either scared him off or did not arouse his interest. But when he saw Isabella in the photo, she seemed to him a copy of Jennifer Lopez, and he decided to write to her. It should be noted that they corresponded for quite a long time and very often. Isabella told him about how she always wanted to move to America from Colombia, how long she had been learning the language, how she was looking for a job, and finally, she even confided in him and told him about her past relationships. Bennett was not at all embarrassed by this, especially since Isabella and William's divorce is only a matter of time. As for the young woman herself, she was apparently tired of past relationships and the long divorce, which ate up all the inner strength. She herself took the initiative to meet in person and began to come to Lewis wherever he was, whether it was England, Australia, or even Thailand. And Lewis, trying to strike his new lover, bought a catamaran on which he planned to travel the Caribbean Sea with Isabella. It was his childhood dream because, because of frequent moves, quickly finding new friends could not manage, and had to spend his free time reading adventure books such as Jules Verne or Louis Stevenson. Yes, Bennett has noted that Treasure Island was his favorite book perhaps for a good reason, and it would still play a role in his life. Isabella spent all her free time, whether it was vacation or a long weekend, traveling with Lewis. And she noticed that during these expensive trips, Bennett practically forgot about work. Yes, of course, it could be reduced to the fact that all the processes in his company were so automated that he could live for himself. But nevertheless, Isabella was alarmed. Even once tried to talk to her lover on this topic, but the man either joked away or in full earnest said that he got a huge inheritance and nothing to worry about. Isabella was satisfied with such an answer. In July 2016, the couple had a joyful event. They had a daughter. For Louis, as well as for Isabella, it was the first child. The girl they named Amelia. And here, the young parents began the first disagreements, which Isabella, because of the past sad experience, experienced extremely hard. They could not decide how right they should bring up their daughter, then in what country the daughter would be better to grow up. 
Lewis insisted with all his might that Amelia grew up in Australia, next to his parents, and Isabella, on the contrary, did not want to go anywhere from America. Finally, the young father gave in, and in 2017, the whole family moved to Florida, where they, despite the already born daughter, decided to finally get married. Isabella begged her now husband to go on a honeymoon, as she hoped that this sea voyage would bring them back to the state when they first got to know each other and carefree sailing around the islands on the high seas on his catamaran. Lewis heard his wife's whims and promised her that there would definitely be a honeymoon. But a little later, and Lewis wasn't lying. In late April 2017, he returned from Australia, and the couple headed out on their romantic cruise. Yes, at first, judging by the posts on social media, everything was indeed as Isabella wanted. In all the photos, they are smiling, clasping each other in their arms, and traveling around the Caribbean islands. However then, after those endless honeymoon photos, a lull began. A long one. For two weeks. When Isabella reappeared online, she told her family that she and her husband were in Cuba and were planning to return to Florida, but didn't know which way yet. She also added that they have a very bad connection here, so in the next few days, they may not expect a call from her. On the night of May 15, the Coast Guard received a call for help from Lewis. He said he was alone on a raft in the open sea. Rescuers immediately went in search of him. The man was found near the Bahamas, and he was indeed alone on a boat that was filled to the top with various things and provisions. On the shore, Lewis told the following story. On May 14th, after a tiring day, he asked Isabella to give him a few hours of rest and entrusting his wife with the management of. The catamaran went to take a nap in the cabin. Lewis was awakened by a heavy thump from below, and he called out to his wife, but she did not respond. Then he went upstairs, looked around, and realized that Isabella was nowhere on board. And the very blow that had awakened him had created a hole in the bottom of the catamaran, through which water began to enter his vessel, and the boat began to sink. Lewis decided that his wife was simply carried overboard by the blow, and since she was wearing a vest, she was fine. And in order not to go to the bottom with his child, he gathered all his belongings and moved to the rescue boat. Meanwhile, the rescuers, having taken a look at the contents of Lewis's life raft, were surprised, as the man took only those things that belonged to him, as if he had no hope that his beloved Isabella was alive and would soon be found. He even brought his tea set with him. Also, in his backpack, were found aluminum tubes inside which were hidden silver coins. But this discovery was not paid attention to because it was necessary to move urgently to search for Isabella. The Coast Guard used absolutely all the equipment they had, including helicopters, and surveyed the entire area, but all to no avail. But they found the very catamaran, which, according to Lewis's statements, crashed on underwater rocks. But there were no underwater rocks or reefs in the vicinity, nor had the boat itself gone completely to the bottom. It was decided to inspect the boat. For this purpose, several divers were sent to it. Again, the results of their examination did not coincide with Lewis's story. As I said earlier, there were no underwater rocks at the wreck site. The boat simply could not have collided with anything, and the holes that were on the bottom were made from inside the boat, not outside. Another literally shocking oddity in this case was that the boat had all the escape hatches open, which of course increased the rate of sinking of the catamaran. And Lewis mentioned in his story that he left the boat over the side, as he was supposed to. The fact is that escape hatches are strictly forbidden to be opened, and they are needed only when there is no other way to leave the sinking vessel. Also, Lewis, being an experienced seafarer, did not use a beacon or satellite phone, which would have helped rescuers to find travelers in time in case of disaster. That is, from the outside, it looked as if Lewis deliberately sank the ship and made it look like an accident. But then where is his wife? On May 17, the search for Isabella continued, although 120 hours had passed since the catamaran wreck. While the possibility of finding a woman alive in the middle of the open sea is only 13 hours, on May 18th, the search stopped. Isabella has not been found to this day. Lewis himself returned home on May 15th, as if he wasn't really worried about missing Isabella. And what's more, he bought just one ticket to Australia for May 19th, so he didn't even hope that the rescue team would be able to find his wife, dead or alive. But he tried his best to get his wife's death certificate as soon as possible so that he could get the insurance he was entitled to as a close relative. This was denied. After the insurance company refused, Lewis visited Isabella's parents and tried to take his daughter away from them. 
They blamed him for Isabella's death and did not want to give Emilia away. He was able to take his daughter only after calling the police. On May 28, he left Amelia with his parents in the UK and returned to Florida to try again to get the insurance payment, which by law was entitled to him. To the police, Lewis's behavior seemed extremely suspicious. They were literally sure that he was to blame for his wife's disappearance, but they had no evidence. Even the catamaran on which the murder could theoretically have taken place, and on which it was possible to find evidence confirming it had gone to the bottom to a great depth, and it was impossible to get it out of there. But the search of the house where Lewis and Isabella lived, as well as Lewis's own cell phone, proved fruitful. Yes, the fact that the husband and wife could not communicate with each other for weeks, and the husband himself could periodically disappear from home and not appear there for a long time, is not considered any evidence. But the fact that in the house were found recording devices on which Isabella recorded constant threats of her husband already pushed the investigation to the idea that not everything in their relationship was smooth. Because judging by these records, Lewis repeatedly promised to kill his wife. Isabella even told her friends about it and shared with them that she wanted to leave her fierce husband and cruel tyrant. But only try one more time, now the last, to save their relationship. But as we already know, she never succeeded. The main reason for quarrels were debts. Lewis, real estate, electricity, credit cards. He literally drowned in debt, and getting out of this pit seemed impossible. Moreover, he did not try to solve his problems, but only continued to travel on his catamaran. Still did not work anywhere, and in addition, spent some of the rest of his savings on such things as Thai boxing lessons in Thailand. Of course, Isabella didn't like it, and in the meantime, Lewis even forced his wife to give up child rearing and get a job so that she could pay off his debts while he was doing more important things. Looking into Lewis Bennett's debts, the investigation also found that between 2014 and 2016, the man engaged in international transfers totaling about $160,000. As it turned out, the very coins that rescuers found in Lewis's backpack were very rare and collectible. Later, the investigation will establish that the coins were stolen in 2016 by one of Lewis's acquaintances who, at that time, was a member of the crew of the ship Kitty. And when the crew went to town, this acquaintance stole the coins and gave them to Lewis for further resale. Yes, it was for smuggling that the investigation managed to put Lewis behind bars because during a search of the house, in addition to those tape recordings, the police found some of the coins. For smuggling, Lewis received seven months in prison. There, while behind bars, the man also received a second charge just for the involuntary manslaughter of his wife. The investigation carefully checked all the facts that they had on their hands and which they so scrupulously collected piece by piece and came to the conclusion that during their trip, Isabella found in her husband's things those very collectible coins. And between them, there was a scandal, but it was not entirely clear whether Isabella had been killed on the boat or in the water during the quarrel. Quite fiery and somewhere even cruel, husband could either not calculate the force of the blow or throw the woman into the water, and then do not provide her with any help. And so Isabella drowned while her husband watched her torment being on board. During the tragedy, Lewis realized that his wife's death was a good thing for him. And if he made it look like a sinking boat accident, he would get an additional payout for the sinking catamar. And in addition to the money for Isabella's death, since it was also considered an insured event. But only the whole story on the part of the prosecution was just a fantasy of the grief-stricken relatives. Lewis was never charged with premeditated murder for lack of evidence. He was offered a deal that if he pleaded guilty, he would only get eight years. Lewis accepted. But should he have agreed to it if he really is not guilty and all the evidence against him is only a tape recorder where he threatens his wife? Isabella's relatives were, of course, furious at this verdict, but also realized that otherwise, Lewis Bennett would serve the rest of his time for the smuggling article and be released very soon. In November 2018, Lewis Bennett received eight years in prison and all of the insurance payments and all of his wife's assets, which he had claimed and for which he had arranged all of this, will go to Amelia. Also, the court ordered Lewis to pay monetary compensation to his daughter who has yet to experience such serious psychological trauma as she grows up. Thanks for watching, guys. That was Jack with you. Subscribe to my channel. There are many shocking stories ahead.